In this video, I'm going to get you up and running with connecting to data sources using APIs. Now, API stands for Application Programming Interface and allows a program to retrieve data from a system. Now, a program could be something written in a language like Python or PHP, or a program could even be your web browser or Excel using Power Query, as I'm going to demonstrate. And the system is any repository of data, and very often it's web-based. So you might be using an API to get data from something like MailChimp or PayPal. In this video, we'll look at web APIs, which is just like loading a web page in your browser. Now, there will be some technical jargon sprinkled throughout, but the beauty of using Power Query is that you don't need to know what most of it means, because Power Query hides the technicalities. So you don't need to worry about doing any programming. Let's get started. Entering a URL like this one is effectively an API request. Here I've asked the website des.qld.gov.au to send me some information. And the response sent to my browser is just plain text, but it's in a JSON format, which Power Query understands and can decode. Now, typically, an API will return data formatted either as JSON, XML, or CSV. But again, you don't need to worry about this. Power Query will decode it for you. To understand how to make an API request, the first thing you need to do is look at the documentation for the API. And this page contains details about an API available from the Queensland Government, which provides data about the wildlife found here. We can see that the data is returned in one of three formats. JSON, XML, or CSV. And lower down the page, in the Data and Resources section, there's further information on how to retrieve specific data. Let's say we want to get all species in a particular family. I'll click on Get Species, and that takes me to a page with more information on how to query this type of data. I can see there's a mandatory variable called Family and that the query must supply and further down the page, there are examples of some queries. So if I want to get the names of all parrots, my query will be this format. If I want the names of other families, I just need to supply that family name. I can use the species profile search to see the list of species in the database. You can see them listed here. If I want to check out the reptiles, I can click on Reptilia. Our younger son has a bearded dragon lizard, so I'm going to look at the Agamidae family of lizards. To do this, I just need to modify the example query for parrots. So I'll go back to the page where I had the example queries and I'll copy it, Control C to copy. And then we're going to use Power Query to get the data. So on the data tab of the ribbon from web, I'm going to paste in the example query and I'm going to replace the family name with Agamidae. Power Query is asking me how I'd like to connect to this web page. I'm going to connect anonymously. There's nothing confidential on this web page. So we'll simply click connect. Power Query has extracted a list and I'm going to convert it into a table. And then from there, I can expand the list to new rows. If I click in the records, you can see the information that's available for each record. These are all the columns. And I can expand those records and I can deselect any columns that I don't want. Let's load them all for now and we'll take a look. And here's the data about the Agamidae family of dragon lizards. If we look here, there's further records I can expand on. So for example, I can look at the NCA status, which tells me whether the species is endangered, vulnerable, or there's no concern. So let's look at endangered and vulnerable only. And we're left with two species that have that criteria. And I can simply close and load. And here I can either close and load to a table, a pivot table report, pivot chart, just create a connection, or I can even add it to the data model, which is Power Pivot. Let's just load it to a table in the worksheet for now. The nice thing about having an API connection is it can be refreshed at any time. Simply right click and then refresh the query, and that will give you the latest data. NASA provides several APIs, which are listed at api.nasa.gov. To use the NASA APIs, you're required to generate an API key that's used in the request that you make. 
In this case, the API key is just a code that's included in the query URL to identify you. But if you're just making a few requests, you don't need to generate your own API key. You can use the demo key provided by NASA in their examples, and that's what I'll be using. So let's check out what the weather is like on Mars. Yes, there's even an API for that. If we click on the plus beside InSight, here it tells us that the InSight Mars lander sends data to Earth about Mars's climate. And below the image, you can see the request you need to send to get this data. So I'm going to copy the URL here, and we'll go back to Power Query, Data, From Web. I'll paste in the URL. Again, it's asking me how I want to authenticate. I'm going to use Anonymous. There's nothing confidential here. This API provides per soul summary data for each of the last seven available souls, and a soul is a Martian day. The last two rows are just metadata. So let's convert this into a table, and I'm going to filter out the metadata in the last two rows. And here we have the last seven soul numbers. If we click in record, you can see there's further information. So let's expand this. And again, we can drill down even further. AT is atmospheric temperature, HWS is horizontal wind speed, PRE is atmospheric pressure, and WD is wind direction. Now I'm only interested in the weather, so I'm just going to delete these, pressing the delete key, and let's expand the records for the atmospheric temperature, and there they are. Now I'll let you play around with it and read through the API if you want further understanding of this data. For now, I'm just going to close and load, and it's going to load it into a table, which is my default setting. Let's take a look at another example. If you use Stripe to take payments, then you can get data about your Stripe account through their API at this URL. Stripe require all requests to their API to be authenticated, so you need to get API keys from inside your Stripe account. In the meantime, you can create test keys so that rather than using your own live data, you can use test data while you get comfortable with the API. Now let's say I want to retrieve a list of all charges, which are payments into your account. You'll find the documentation under core resources, charges, and then list all charges. You can see that the API request uses a URL and I'll just copy it here. And we'll go back to Excel data from web. I'll paste it in. Now remember, Stripe requires a username and password. So I'm going to go in and use basic authentication. And I'll go back to the Stripe page. I'm going to copy the username. This is just the test username. And I don't want the colon on the end. We'll paste in the username and simply click connect. There's no password for this account. This is just a test account but you will require a password when you connect to your own Stripe account. So again, I'm going to convert this into a table. I'm only interested in the data, so let's filter out everything but the data. Then I can expand to new rows and expand the records. And there we have some sample data relating to charges to the test Stripe account. And again, we can expand the records even further if required. You can see there's a few columns with further records. So you can see that connecting to APIs with Power Query is relatively easy, especially if the API is well documented. I hope you're excited to try out APIs. You can download the Excel file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.